Hi everyone, it's Ross again. Um, so I'm going to do a short video on how I make fast and easy marbling effects. So I've got a large base here, and I've primed it so it's nice and smooth. Now smoother the better. I can't pick it up. Got no nails. There we go. Um, so yeah, it doesn't look too too bad. Um, so what I've used is some what we call wet and dry paper. So being a mechanic, I have um, access to this stuff for bodywork to make it nice and smooth. So it's basically ultra ultra fine sandpaper. Put a little bit of water on it, make it as smooth as you can. So you can still see the original dimple in the centre of the base there. But I rubbed it down, I'm trying to make it as smooth as possible. Uh, so for this technique, it's really really simple. All you need is some kind of wet wipe, so I've got one here, and uh, leave it outside for a few days to in the sun or air and covered something like that, and just let it dry out so it's really, really ultra dry. Massively ultra dry. And you can see that I've already previously used this one because there's a bit of black on there. But once it is really dry, just tease it a little bit, just a little bit in every direction. Not enough to make a big gaping hole or anything. So on previous experiments, you can see there, that's a bit excessive um, for what I want to do. I want to do small veins of marble. So I am going to stress this thing as much as possible without tearing a hole. So that there you can see is quite thin, it's probably a bit much. A little bit, oh, probably a bit too much there. Okay, something like that. So the idea is, when you lay this over your base and you spray it either with a rattle can or an airbrush, I'll be using an airbrush in this video. It should leave those marks behind, giving you some kind of veiny pattern. So I've previously primed it, uh, and you can pick whatever you, colours you want for marble. So I'm going to go for semi-traditional marble colours. I'm going to go with um, like a stony, um, maybe something like this from GW, that kind of colour first. Uh, maybe a little bit of white with it because it is a bit strong. And then making some like dark grey veins and things like that. But experiment. Uh, the first time I used it, I used a like a fluorescent turquoise base. And then as you can tell, I used some black veins in it. But just experiment and just have fun. So pick a couple of crazy colours if you wanted to. Fluorescent greens, blues, whatever you want. But just for the purposes of this video, I'm going to mix up some stone colour. Blast this in a second and then get back to you when it's all dry with a wet wipe, if that makes sense. All right, see you in a sec. Okay, so once you've painted your your base, uh, I would recommend when you paint it with your, your, um, your standard color, your base color, be it fluorescent green or stone or whatever, like me, I've painted stone here. Uh, don't paint it too thick, uh, too, too perfect. So I've done it slightly blotchy because I believe that the stone in nature obviously isn't going to be perfect, so it's not going to be polished or anything like that, it's going to be slightly off. It's not going to be the most perfect stone ever. I mean, by all means, if you want to paint it perfect or one solid colour, go for it. But I'm thinking nature is not quite like that. So I am teasing my sheet. That's right, you heard me, I'm teasing my sheet. So I'm going to try to stretch it across a little bit. Maybe tease it a little bit more. So remember not to tear gaping holes in it, but just to pull the fabric across. So if you can see that, you can just see my fingers start to emerge. My dirty paint colored fingers. This is where I rip it on camera and ruin it. But just, uh, yeah, just mess with the sheet a little bit, pull it, 
manipulate it, work it a little bit. That's what I want. Stretch it out nice and flat if you can. And I'm using uh, black with a little bit of the stone colour. So I'll just test it out a minute. And hopefully I won't blow the sheet away with the airbrush. So straight down if you can. And if you haven't teased it enough, it's not going to be a problem, it's just not going to come through. So you're not going to ruin your base. You just might find you have to tease the wet wipe a bit more. Okay, that's it. And let's see what it looks like. All right, so the first color I've done has come through slightly. Oh, a little bit in my hand there, there we go. Get rid of that before I touch the base of it. And that's just very, very slight. So what I'm gonna do now is wait until the wet wipe is dry again and move it in a slightly different position and tease it in a different way with a different color to get another effect. Right. Okay, so I've got one lot down, um, just a, a gentle bit, so I'm gonna tease the sheet and then wrap it around the base so it doesn't flap around this time, and um, do it with a slightly different color, so this time I've gone with a, a uh, more of a gray color. And I've teased the sheet a bit more, Hopefully it makes it a bit more obvious. Let's see what I got now. So this is uh, purely experimenting to show you what you can do. But yeah, wrapping it around was a good bet. Yeah, so that's a marbly effect. So I'll put different color veins in there. So I'll hit it maybe with a white or something in a second. And that's it, that's how you get in your random patterns. So it's a little bit different. But remember, marble isn't just two colors. So I'm gonna do probably a whiter color this time around. Same trick as before, wrapping the cloth around. And I'll mix up my next lot of paint. Hopefully by the time I do that, the base will be dry and I'll hit it again with a different colour. Okay, so once again I've mixed up a slightly different colour, so I'm going with stony colours and greys and things like that. And I've wrapped the wet wipe around the base. Stop from flapping, so let's Drench in a few different places. The little airbrush is kicking in. Okay, now it's done. Take a look, be careful not to drag it as you lift it off. And a few other different patches. Now, add uh, different colors, uh, repeat the procedure to taste. Obviously, try not to get the same pattern twice. Um, obviously, it's quite tough to do that anyway. Uh, but yeah, just keep plugging away. Um, keep making it weird and as random as you like, um, as nature intended. Just, like I said, don't make it too uniform. Have fun and experiment. Uh, feel free to put your pictures up on a Facebook page. Uh, we we'll, uh, would we'll love to see your work. So once you're reasonably happy with your base, you can also, if you wanted to, 
looks a bit matte and most uh, marbles are a bit shiny. You could put a varnish down. So I've got a, a model air varnish here, which I'll attempt to run through the airbrush. And now I'm going to spray the base. Get it nice and even if I can. Okay, and hopefully when that dries, they'll look more like marble. Okay. And there you have it, after the varnish is dry, add uh, varnish and say to taste that's great isn't it yeah let's just eat some varnish um but yeah just a, a little bit of a shine to make it look more stone like let's see if I can get a bit of an angle on it and you can see it better but yeah just mess around uh some marble effects have veins in it so you could maybe put a slit inside the the wet wipe um but yeah just get a bit creative and do some random patterns